Congratulations! Those propaganda boards have caught your attention, and now you have decided to take a career in the realm of the Imperial Starfighter Corps. So buckle into your cockpit seat and stick on your helmet, because you're about to learn how to be an effective TIE Fighter pilot. So, first things first, you're going to want to make sure that this is the part of the Imperial Armada you really want to join. It takes a specific kind of person to become a member of the Imperial Starfighter Corps, having the highest mortality rate out of any of the corps due to some oversights. <laughs> Nevertheless, the Empire is looking for individuals who are extremely strong-willed, have a high tolerance for immense pressure, are able to operate within dangerous environments and coordinate effectively with other people, to name a few. So, if you think these descriptions along with any more happen to match up with your skill set and personality, then don't hesitate to head down to your local Imperial Recruitment Centre and sign up. So what can you expect now that you've enlisted for the Starfighter Corps? Well, that's where the Empire's many top academies will run you through the ins and outs of being a Starfighter pilot and more importantly, how to stay alive. There are multiple different TIE Fighter training academies throughout the galaxy, with each offering its own varied and exotic locale, these being Coruscant, Carida, Rythal, Arcanus, Coralag, and the most famous of which, Skystrike Academy on Montross. So maybe look into the environment you'll be flying in. Might just help. Now, only an idiot would consider joining the Starfighter Corps, let alone the Empire, and not consider the area they want to specialise in. Which in this case, do you consider whether you want to support your squadron, go on the attack, be well balanced, or cause devastating damage? Your choice. Personally, I wouldn't even choose the Starfighter Corps to begin with. The training program lasts for roughly a year and in that time you'll undergo some of the most intense and rigorous training that the Empire has to offer, spending hours at a time learning to fly and operate a TIE Fighter, along with any of the other TIE variants how to operate in war, and how to keep operating in war. AKA, how not to run away. This is done by intense psychological conditioning, altering the mindset of the pilot to fly towards the danger to combat it and not away from it. Also drilling in the idea that the success of the mission is valued above all else, even one's own life. I think that now gives you an idea of why this core is so dangerous. But not only that, cadets will also receive science education, strategizing, mathematics, communication, and melee combat. What? Not all combat scenarios involve starfighters. But don't stress, if this is all too much for you, which it probably is, and you don't manage to pass, then the Empire will automatically reassign you to other roles, which is all the more common than you might expect for TIE Fighter cadets, with 90% of the overall cadet pool failing the program. For reassigned roles, the position will usually be that of an Imperial Gunner, Trooper, civil security, or any roles that are vacant. But for those of you who do succeed, learning at one of these prestigious academies is only the beginning of your TIE pilot journey. After graduating, you're going to find yourself being assigned to one of the many different posts throughout the galaxy. These range from outposts and bases on planets, infrastructure such as towns, villages, and cities, and lastly, what you're probably most familiar with, Star Destroyers. It's important to have a broad understanding and know the environment you're going to operate in, as that can be a huge help in terms of increasing your survivability out in the field. You don't want to think you're going to fly into atmosphere and then somehow end up in space with all the dangers that it poses. Now that you've become a pilot, chose your specialty and figured out what environment you're going to be assigned to, now it's time to brush up and practice the most important skill any TIE pilot can have and that's Squadron Cohesion. Get to know the members of your TIE Squadron, find out where their strengths lie, and how you can all best perform when in an actual combat scenario. Having an effective squadron can be the best way to exceed over the enemy in battle, so excellent communication is an absolute must, since no one wants five TIEs to leave the hangar and have only one return. So maybe hit up the local cantina and have a chill night out with your fellow pilots. A third for thought. But relying on the goodwill of others will only get you so far in actual battle scenarios. You need to also know and understand the enemies you're going up against. In this case, it's the Rebels. The Rebels employ a variety of different Starfighter variants within battle, so you need to know which is which and how best to tackle each one. The Rebels make use of Starfighters such as the X-Wing, A-Wing, Y-Wing, U-Wing and B-Wing and many more to engage us in battle 
And to give you the brutal truth, most if not all the fighters that they have are a lot better than the TIE series, simply put. Especially in the realm of pilot protection and comfort. But that did not mean that TIE fighters are at a disadvantage. Because of this, you guys could probably consider yourself some of the best and most fearless pilots in the galaxy, willing to jump into the flying death traps and take out some rebels. But don't forget, communication is the name of the game. Not just with your fellow squadron members, but also with the folks in charge of whatever vessel, base or outpost, as they'll usually have a wider view of the battlefield in a way you don't. Being able to relay information on enemy positioning, enemy squadron composition, whether you should be on the offence or defence and much more so keep your comms open. The Starfighter Corps has been put in a precarious position of being one of the most dangerous corps to operate for. As such, you need to know how to come back from a battle alive. Of course, good squadron composition is one thing, but securing and protecting important Imperial assets such as bases or Star Destroyers is again vital, as well they can certainly protect themselves, it is you pilots who will keep them operational. This means that unless for any other reason, you keep enemy starfighters away from critical hard points of allied capital ships and bases. After all, they are your only lifeline when out in the field, which is unfortunate to say the least, so keep them as your top priority. Well, look at that. You can now officially consider yourself an adept Imperial TIE pilot, so why not get out there and stick it to the Rebels? The stars are the limits when it comes to how you can improve with the Imperial TIE Fighter, and the more time you spend flying, the better. So with that, why not like, subscribe and share this video to start your journey into the Empire today, and with that, long live the Empire and may the Force be with you.